spelling. All right, I got my dial indicator out here. I'll go ahead and give a little bit on it. And you can do this with a gap gauge or a feeler gauge set. But it's just more accurate yeah. to do it this way. Mm -hmm. Hold it down, put it on yeah. zero, and then we can see what exactly how much it is. How about that? Okay. And yeah. let go of it. You can see it's about 40. 40, 40. So we're good. You know, even though it's, it's a little less gap than, mm -hmm. you know, I've seen a lot of the heads, it's still acceptable uh, without having to adjust the engine brake yet. And of course, when we adjust the engine brake, we'll check it again. Make sure it didn't get lower. But uh, it should be fairly close because, you know, it was still adjusted to where it was. Let's uh, let's check the other ones. Let's see where they're at. There we go. And we've got about 25 on that one. You see, there's this one sits a little higher. Mm -hmm. You see that? So we're with this spec, but it's a little tight. So when we do our uh, overhead adjustment, we should probably recheck that one to make sure we're not we're not under spec. And then let's do the last one. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I like to check everything with dial indicators. I mean, that's a little overkill, but, you know, this truck, if it was my truck, I mean, it's your truck. I treat everybody's truck like it's mine when it's here. <laughs> my truck, I ain't taking no chances. Same I ain't going to give it any excuse to fail because I have to make my living with this thing. You know, somebody has to make their living with this equipment. It's not uh, take your toy playground time, you know. You don't take a guess. You either know for sure or you don't do it. Plus, so. while you're in it, it's your life in your hands. That's, well, it's your livelihood. Yeah. Don't make the $36,000 mistake. That's what I tell people. Yeah. You know, don't make the $36,000 mistake. Let me go down to the bottom of this one. Okay. And we will adjust this one. That one's got a lot in it. Yeah, that's... The most. Yeah. So, uh, we could tell too when we were, you know, when we were fiddling with uh, it. Kind of 50. Yeah, it's 50 something. It's well under 110 though. So, we know for sure that it's good. And uh, just double checking ourselves so that we're not wasting our time when we do go to run the overhead. We don't have to, have to readjust any bars or rocker shafts. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you would do that on both sides if you really had a question or concern. But you, know, you kind of feel it that this one's a little narrow, you know. Mm -hmm. We've got a more now. We got quite a little bit. Make sure that this exhaust rocker is loose when you check that. Okay, that one's a little. That one's tight. So we that, need. That's when it's engaged. So. Just as, yeah, it's starting to. You can see it's starting to there. So we need to check that one again when we uh, when we go to the overhead. But I, I'm sure it's going to be okay. It'll be within spec. It'll be pretty close. So we'll do the overhead and we'll check it again after it's done. So now let's put the uh, injector Inject shaft and injector arms in there. Or injector rock uh, levers. There they go. Oh, careful. And let's get that one set in there. And it's the same thing. Just, you know, make sure the stems of the injectors themselves go up into the heads or the you know, they go up into the, the seats when you set it on, and then bring it down. That's easy. So, let me get out of the way because that thing's quite heavy. Let me bring it up here and set it down. Cut. That's why you leave the bolts in it so it don't fall apart. Mm-hmm. All right, you rolling? Mm-hmm. All right, what do you get? What do you get back? trick to the injector rockers and the rocker shaft is these spacers. These little spacers right here. You see these spacers? Mm -hmm. There's one right there, a little gray spacer. Yeah. See how it's turning? I can turn it. Yeah. See how I can move it? Make sure as you're bringing this thing down that you can turn those spacers. You, you know, they may get a little snug, but you, you should be able to turn them with your fingers. All spacers are turning. All spacers. And then bring right. the bolts down. And also, and also when you put Yeah, this, you'll, you'll have to make you sure those align, you have fit to up this, in the head. Yeah. sticks, you have to align all the way to All the, three. In, inside, yeah. And then now bring the bolts down. And as you bring the bolts down, check your spacers uh, after you start getting a little bit of stiffness on the bolts. So... 
Oh, what you got there? There you go. Yeah, and get them all. Spacers yep. are rolling, 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 yep. rolling. Check rolling. all your spacers as you bring it down and bring it all the way down with by hand. Everything's rolling. Yeah, I like to bring like the two center ones the way I brought it up. The same way I raised it up, I like to take the two center ones and work first, it down. First of all, the two center center? Yeah, roughly, one. yeah. That way I'm not on the very end. Okay. I like to start bringing it down with those two and work the spacers as I go. You know, a little on each side, check all the spacers, a little on each side, check all the spacers. And check the spacers as you come down. Make sure they don't get real too too awful tight. Yep. Make sure you got a little play in there. Yep. There you go. Keep going. Rolling. Alright, now we need to set this torque wrench to 70 foot pounds so we can torque all our bolts. We have everything snugged up by hand. Uh, both rocker shafts for the injector and for the valve train are down and just snug by hand uh, with a little bit of torque by hand and now we need to actually set the torque <clears throat> Cummins you'll probably get a bunch of flack on YouTube again uh, Cummins says to set this I think to 20 foot pounds and then go like 160 degrees on each one I'm sorry I don't agree with that uh, you know as a retired engineer these bolts are not stretchy bolts you know they're not uh, bolts designed to be stretched there's no reason to do that you know, torque them to 70 foot-pounds. That's where they end up most of the time anyways. Almost always they're about 70 to 72 foot-pounds. So just torque them to 70 foot-pounds because that's where they were. Uh, if you'll check, if you check these, you know, that's where you end up most of the time. So that's all I do. I torque them to 70 foot-pounds. They're not designed, they're, they're, those, these bolts are not stretch bolts. So, you know, that's just what I do. Yeah, you can disagree with me all you want, but I've done a whole bunch of them. I've never had a problem. Uh, that's one of the few cases where I disagree on the procedure in the book. You know, just, I don't like that 160 degree thing, especially on these cast, these little short cast end pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, they've only got about that much thread in them. They're cast. If you get too much torque in there, it's going to crack the cast. You get problems. Just put it to a set torque. That's my opinion. You can do it however you want. Or you can do it how, you book, how the book says. What would you prefer? I will prefer whatever you say. I believe seventy foot pounds. Yes. Done a bunch of them. <clears throat> that's what I do. That's what I do. I said it's seventy foot pounds. So let's set the torque wrench to seventy, and we will go from there. And you can start and work your way this way towards the ends, or you can go one to the end to the other if you already have them really snug. These were already pretty snug, so do them from the center outwards. It's just a, uh, it's a short shaft. It's very thick. It's not like you're going to stretch it and push it that way. You can go and work your way out from the center if you want. You know, you can do it that method too. Both methods work fine. So. And then I always double check myself. And this one, you forgot this one. Yep, see that's why I double check myself. Find a mechanic that will do that for you. Double checking. And then? No one. Exactly. We didn't touch this side, but I double check them all. Because it's my motor, it's my truck, and I want to make sure that everything is correct. There we go. Now we run the overhead on the engine, on the whole thing. Run the whole overhead, all six cylinders. 
So we're red sequence is one five three six two four. You we're gonna see how bad I did mine and how is the <laughs> Ross's uh, <laughs> professional way to do. I did. Well, I did I'm not gonna make a to video him. on the overhead. We already have a video on the overhead. Yeah, but, but I mean, just for us. We'll yeah, for us, we'll do that. Yeah. Uh, make sure you put the engine brake harness back where it goes. Yep. You know. We'll wait for that one because we're going to run the overhead first. We'll just yeah, keep so it that's easier. Yeah, you don't want to wiggle with that. <clears throat> and uh, that's it. Make sure all your cross heads are in place. Uh, you know, you didn't put any trash or leave anything in here. You know, a lot of guys will take uh, clean engine oil and they'll squirt it on all the parts in here before they crank it up. Uh, things like that. Double check things. Make sure it looks good. Uh, you know, we do all that. And... Whatever you do, after you run the overhead on this, uh, you know, take a little bit of WD-40 or penetrating oil mm -hmm. and uh, just wash all these rollers a little bit, just, just a little bit to get the dirt and stuff off of them, you know, dust and things like that and wash it down. Mm -hmm. And also the very edge where the gasket goes for the cover, kind of wet it down a little bit with some WD-40, wipe it off really well so it'll seal good, you don't get some trash and dirt under the, under the gasket seal. Okay. And um, that uh, WD-40 you know, won't interact with oil in certain bad way. A tiny little bit here and there, but I always recommend changing the oil after doing stuff like this, anyways. Soon after, yeah. so it's, you know, it's close to the oil change. So you know, drive it to down. the oil change place and have the oil changed. Yeah. Obviously, once you you know, anytime you're messing around up here and you opening things up, it's always a good idea to you know have the oil changed soon after mm -hmm. and not run twenty thousand miles on God knows what you've dust and things you've gotten into the engine. Yeah. It's not rocket science, but you know, it is an engine, it's important. You know, you make your living with it, so you yeah. should be careful as you can. Make your best decisions, so. Let's run the overhead. And we get all done with the overhead, we gotta start this thing back up. Now remember, we drained all the fuel out of the injectors. Yes. Okay, so it's gonna be a hard start. Uh, it's dry up here, so you turn the key switch on, and you let the electric fuel pump run. Now, that electric fuel pump will run for two minutes, okay, and it'll shut off on its own. Yeah. So, you know, you might as well get a timer or something out. Uh, turn it on, let it run for two minutes. If you have to put a battery charger on the batteries, you know, sometimes you do if the batteries are low. No. Let it run full two minutes, shut it off, give it about 20, 30 seconds for the ECM to shut down completely. Turn it back on, listen for the fuel pump, the electric fuel pump to come back on. Do that about six times. I wouldn't even try to start the motor before doing that a full two minutes for six times in a row. So uh, you get anything less than that, pull. and you're going to be fighting this thing so bad to get it to crank because even after doing it six times, it's still going to be very dry because none of the solenoids are opening to put fuel up in the uh, up in the injectors. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a hard start. Um, a lot of the guys will use a little bit of ether, or uh, I like to use really cheap brake brake cleaner. Uh, because really cheap brake cleaner is nothing but acetone and methanol, and I like to spray it into the intake pipe uh, where we have it apart still. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of, while somebody's turning the key, ch -ch -ch -ch, you know, a little bit, and give it a little help. And um, that's it's one, even, way, to, it's one way to get it to crank up. And the first time it cranks, with it dry like this, the first mm -hmm. couple of times it kind of stumbles and catches, it's going to be, you know, you know, it's going to be bad. Mm -hmm. uh, Until it and, settles, and, and it'll it. run bad for about five minutes, maybe ten minutes. It'll it'll really run bad, and that's pretty normal uh, because you know you got so much air up here, so much air in the system now. And uh, but there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, not a whole lot you can do about it. Yeah. Uh, I haven't found any method. I mean, there's a there's a port right here on the side of the the gear pump where you can like use an external electric fuel pump and then precharge the the gear pump. I think. Uh, I think some of the speed codes and guys do that sometimes to repair shops. I don't have that. I'm just a guy in my yard, you know, and I, I have a lot of Cummins tools and stuff, but I don't have that one. So it's just a matter of spraying the intake with a little bit of Give it the help. Acid, you know, bre cheap brake cleaner, which is, you know, you look on the cam. Is it better acetone, than ether? Methanol. Is it uh, better ether's than... very powerful. I don't like to use ether because it's so explosive. Oh. And, you know, you can get a, a really bad backfire with ether. You, you're going to get a little bit of backfire with acetone. actually burn yourself or something. Yeah, you yeah. Can get, you're still going to get a little bit of backfire with acetone methanol, doing, you know, spraying in the intake a little bit, going, sh -sh -sh, you know, a little bit here and there while somebody's cranking it. Mm -hmm. But with ether, it could be, like, really strong. And I I like to be a little safe about it. Yeah, You know, sure. something a little less volatile. 
that you know I can kind of stumble on and get going with if, if that's what we're going to use or if not you know I've seen guys just you know just keep cranking keep cranking you know but cycle that electric pump six times that's better than than the cranking the starter and get get the starter at least to, to, you know to, the yeah the, the to the, work hard the one side of it's back with fuel and everything in it so yeah, yeah it's better than just cranking 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 and yeah. wearing the starter yeah. out so uh, all right you, let's do the overhead and then you we'll make sure try you to check, get this thing started. check Raz's overhead he did that it's on youtube in, uh, yeah. he's on youtube channel Raz's collection you check that video he made a really good video on how to make an overhead and that's what we're gonna do now